we are back and always excited on these Mondays to talk to Coach Brian Kelly, who was off last weekend but has a huge game this Saturday night. Coach, fast, uh, first of all, thanks so much. And uh, I know it wasn't uh, a restful weekend like some of us had, but uh, how did you spend your weekend? Well, we had a recruiting weekend. Uh, with two bye weeks, we have to be able to, uh, you know, take advantage of, of the weekend. So we had uh, an official visit weekend, uh, gave the players uh, Friday and Saturday off, um, practiced the whole week. Um, because with two bye weeks, Paul, you know, you really, you can't use them both as recovery weeks. We'll use our second bye week, which is before the Alabama game, uh, as much more of a recovery week. I, I know that uh, with, with all this going on, uh, recruiting and, and, and so many other things, uh, you're not like uh, the rest of us, you know, sitting on the couch. But with what, your upcoming opponent playing early, do you watch the game or do you, would you rather see it uh, later with coaches uh, on film? Well, a little bit of both. You know, we had uh, meetings going on and, and uh, we're hosting, you know, during the day. But we certainly have the TV on. Uh, we're, we're not watching uh, – you know something else we, we've got it on in, in the backdrop so you know we're catching a glimpse here or there uh, of the game but most of our detailed work would certainly come off of of the film uh, but everybody's got their eye towards uh, college football around the football building and, and uh, it's interesting because Ole Miss playing the same place you were you were about a month ago uh, in a very difficult game that they were uh, very potent in that game just some thoughts on what everyone will be talking about all week, and that's what's happening Saturday night. Well, we certainly know the opponent, right? Ole Miss and, and Lane Kiffin has done a great job, um, you know, at Ole Miss. And, and certainly, you know, the talent that he has. Uh, Jackson Dart, returning quarterback, three-year starter. Look, I think if, if we've seen one thing happen this past week, the the quarterback is is driving this, you know, whether it's, at Miami or Vanderbilt or, you know, any of the programs that, that are uh, successful right now, the, the quarterback is, is central to, to driving these, these programs. And uh, make no mistake about it, Jackson Dart is driving this uh, Ole Miss. Now, they have great complementary players. Trey Harris, uh, wide receiver, is outstanding. They have uh, elite players on the defensive side of the ball, and they're well coached. So uh, they're deserving of of their ranking. Um, you know, they they uh, they come in here uh, and and they have a great deal of confidence in what they're doing and how they do it. Uh, Lane has a system of offense that uh, uh, has been successful. So it should be a great matchup. This is look. This is why you play uh, in the SEC to have matchups like this. Uh, uh, on national television in Tiger Stadium. Yeah, I mean, this is certainly a, a rivalry, uh, even even older than me, Coach. Uh, so let me get to uh, <laughs> or me. Well, you're a couple of years younger, but uh, the, the tempo of Ole Miss is is so interesting to watch, especially with, with you having uh, to replace Harold Perkins. Uh, I, uh, in terms of just what you can tell us about preparation, is, is it different than uh, another opponent from a week to week basis? Oh, certainly. Yeah. And look, I, I think that that's where the, the devil is in the details of, you know, if you get too complicated, if you try to do too much, you can't get your guys lined up. And, and look, at the end of the day, this is about, you know, the fundamentals of the game are still at core to being successful on defense. You got to get your cleats in the ground. You got to you got to tackle. Uh, and and so those things have to happen. And so the the structure of this offense is such that, um, they're trying to get you not to be lined up, to to not get your cleats in the ground, not to communicate effectively. So uh, it's absolutely crucial that, you know, and from our standpoint that we get lined up, um, get our calls in and and play fundamentally sound football. If you do that, uh, you, you got half of it. The rest of it now, uh, you, you're going to have to mix some things up because if you give them just basic reads every single time, uh, they're going to go up and down the field. Which puts obviously – pressure on, on your offense uh, to, to score touchdowns, especially. Um, let's talk about that side of the ball because uh, Nussmeyer has been very good. Uh, you have scored points, but uh, you can't leave too many points uh, on, the, on, the, on the field. You have to put them on the board in a game like this, much like last year. That it was just an epic shootout. Yeah, and look, I mean, I don't know that there's any coach that's going to come onto your show and say, hey, look, I want to get into a shootout with, uh, with Ole Miss. <laughs> no. I mean, that's 
that's not a recipe for a long life uh, in this business. You, you want to keep the points down. But look, at the end of the day, it's what you said. You have to take advantage of your opportunities. Now, if you can keep their offense off the field with some sustained drives, fine. But you have to cash in on your opportunities and score points. Garrett Nussmeyer has done a really good job of being opportunistic, converting on third down, utilizing the weapons that he has. He's, he's got an outstanding uh, trio of wide receivers, an outstanding tight end, uh, a really good offensive line, and a running back that is emerging in Caden Durham. So, you know, take advantage of the weapons you have. Take care of the football. Let's not give Ole Miss extra possessions or short fields. Um, and, and be Garrett Nussmeyer. Uh, be the guy that has been uh, really good uh, in the first five weeks. Coach, not to turn you into a, an analyst, that's our, our job, but, but you, you mentioned keeping your eye on games. Your, your former assistant scored the biggest win of his career uh, in Nashville. It, it's what everyone has been talking about, even, even outside of sports. And I was just curious, uh, as you uh, maybe peeked and, and saw the score, what were you thinking uh, about with what happened in Nashville? Really proud of of Clark. Uh, he's worked so hard, and and he has such a love for Vanderbilt. And um, I, I know that it's it's what he wants. He wants to see uh, Vanderbilt succeed. And I, and I think he did a couple of things that um, you know were outside his comfort zone. And and as coaches, sometimes we have to do some things that reinvent us a little bit. And I, I think bringing Jerry Kill in and and Tim Beck on the offensive side of the ball really allowed him to focus on on the defensive side of the ball. It really allowed him to kind of, uh, you know, be who he is. And uh, he kind of, you know, gave up a little bit of the control uh, of, of the offensive side of the ball. And we, we've seen the the effectiveness of controlling, um, you know, the offense uh, and, and keeping his defense off the field. And then Clark is outstanding on the defensive side of the ball. He's, it's still his program. Uh, he still has a process in place that is is highly effective, uh, but I think some of the key additions that he made to his staff in the offseason, we're, we're seeing that come come together. Well, Coach, thank you as always. Uh, we will all be uh, tuned in Saturday night. We'll be relaxing while you're uh, down there in the cauldron. Uh, all the best, uh, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me on. Thank you very much, Brian Kelly, joining us before uh... – his uh, biggest uh, SEC game of the year so far. We take a short break. Back to your phone calls right after this.